What's the crack, lads? Alright. Today, we're going to be doing my our first mapping video. Yep, our first mapping video. Yep. I know. It's insane. Alright, so first of all, yeah, we're going to be using uh, a tool, you can see it up there. A tool called Klecky. Klecky Paint Tool, go check it out. It's not the best tool I could possibly use, not the best thing I could use for this, but uh, but um, can't find a better one. So if you have a better one, then you can do it, because if you can see, yeah, you'll see, I don't know, but anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to be doing a mapping video. You've seen the title of the video, title of it. What if Germany tried to Anschluss Austria? in 2023 well alright let's get into it obviously Germany are going to be the aggressors here and just like in World War 2 their soldiers are going to march into Austria yes that is right as you can see our problem if I try and color the blue one it doesn't just color the blue it colors the black as well for the borders so um, I can't just go like freestyle I have to be careful not to you know get rid of the border so but yeah so maybe I'll get a, I'll get probably get a better one in the future if I can but for now this is what we're gonna have to stick with and you know it's fine but yeah those soldiers march across they uh, take this mountainous area here uh, that would be pretty hard to do but you know don't have much soldiers there uh, soldiers attack in here the um, Austrian soldiers retaliate, but you know, the German force is probably a lot stronger. In fact, it is a lot stronger. They push into Austria. The the Aust they launch a spearhead in here. They come up heading for Vienna, but that is shut down, and they're at a stalemate there. So they they launch an attack down south. Other countries are like, well, there's probably been about four weeks past this war and Europe's like hey what do we do about this Germany's trying to Anschluss Austria well obviously by the United Nations at the end I think it was the United Nations at the end of the war there was a treaty Germany and Austria could never unite again so that is going to trigger everybody but yeah this is going to be oof. this is going to be pretty hard in Germany, but since this is YouTube, I think I'm going to make this more fun. We have Italy joining on the side of Germany after sympathizing for the German and Austrian want for a union. Now, I don't think they they don't want for a union in real life. I don't think they do. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. I'm just you know propaganda. So, uh, you know, the British, of course, they're on the United Nations side. We have Germany, we probably have Russia joining in on the German side, taking advantage of the thing, and also we probably have Ukraine here. I'm just going to, uh, of course, we have Russian, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. This and this as well. Horrible stuff. Uh, so we're just going to plop it in there, it's Russian territory, not Russian territory, that is Ukrainian territory, now, yes, I am taking sides, but yeah, this is Ukrainian territory, just Russia have occupied it, like, aggressively, we have German troops retaliating by pushing further into Austria, trying to get around to Austria before they have the attack from the west, and that comes very quickly, which I'm going to do, very quickly, as their, uh, their soldiers push into the north of Germany here, the Nether Netherland Dutch Dutch soldiers push from the north in here into the into the Ruhr. And uh, we have French troops pushing from Strasbourg into s s this area of Germany here. Don't really know what it's called. You probably should, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't have to be that like geographically. Okay, I'll, I'll stop. But, um, yeah, so Italian troops 
push in from Austria here. They're also not very happy of Austria because they've been, you know, claiming a bit of land over here. A little bit of land that they want over here. But, uh, you know, so they attack their troops, push in, they meet up with Germany and they make another push here. Overall, this war is probably not going much in Germany's favour, so we'll probably just... Poland, but we're gonna have Hungary here, maybe Romania, positive. Serbia with Russia, and that would trigger Albania and Kosovo. We have Greece. Then we're gonna have an interesting one. Turkey's gonna join on the side of Russia. Oh hell no. Yeah, this isn't that realistic, but you know, I have to make it fair on the Germans. So we have uh, these guys probably are gonna join the. European. We have the Baltics, of course. We have Norway. Denmark. Hmm. Maybe I should give Ru uh, maybe I should give Germany a few more allies. I don't know. It's turning into a full blown war against Europe. Finland's gonna join. That is a super unrealistic scenario with Russia on the red team. But you know, come on, let me do what I want. Germany invade their old World War One territories in Belgium and also push a bit further into Belgium with a successful spearhead. They also cross into the Netherlands. They uh they take a bit of territory down here. They also try to push back an offensive here, but it doesn't go very well and the Netherlands capture a lot of soldiers, then make a counter offensive into Germany. Uh we have German troops uh, pushing into Denmark and uh, defeating them in um, in seven hours this time. Not quite, not quite uh, six, seven hours. Yep, that is right, seven hours. Um, we have German troops pushing into the Sudetenland, Sudetenland, not the Sudetenland, Sudetenland. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Yep, that is how you pronounce it think but uh yeah they push into there and from here europe looks pretty tasty some uh, why do i hesitate i don't know just uh don't listen to me talk random stuff but uh yeah war but yeah so we're gonna have a ukrainian offensive down here where all the neat for runs from probably like uh, that's what kind of like there that's kind of the neat for there but um yeah, Ukraine are going to launch an offensive here, where they're going to try push Russia back. This is a major offensive, like, like thousands of tens of thousands of troops are attacking, and they're trying to cut off Russia's two supply lines between Crimea and the Donbass. They almost do it, but Russia just about hold on to that tiny little line, but it is under heavy Ukrainian fire, so... They can't transport anything through here, so, like, let's just pretend Ukraine do own this territory, because it's not like Russia have any connection there now. So, Russia try and make a counter-offensive into Kherson. It goes fairly well, because a lot of Ukrainian troops are focused down there, and they manage to capture Kherson. But Ukraine launches another offensive, yep, offensives all over the border, a, little, a spearhead round here, attacking, then tricking them into going here, maybe for the surrounding, and Russia would try start to withdraw troops, and then ru they come back up for the kill into Donetsk, and Russia are like, oh my god, they tricked us, and they're like, and then Don Donetsk falls, and Russia tries to push back into this old territory, which they do, but Donetsk has fallen to the Ukrainians. Been retaken, should I say. Ukraine pushes down in here, making multiple offensives all over the border now that they have the upper hand, and r as Russia's military for uh, control in Ukraine is collapsing. They make an emergency uh, offensive into the north, because they are losing down south, they make an emergency offensive, which is quickly intercepted by the Ukrainian military closely patrolling the area. And it is put out as a lot of Uk Russian focus has gone into trying to stop the Ukrainians from absolutely 
smashing them out of their territory down here. So they invite Belarus into this war. Belarus now can focus their entire army while Russia focuses theirs here. Belarus focuses there in the north and they go for the attack onto Kiev. Now, Kiev is Ukrainian troops quickly rush to Kiev where they try to I don't know, defend it. They Belarusian troops try to surround the city somehow, but Ukraine will keep a good loss. To keep the Russians busy down here so that they don't try to launch any sneaky offensives while they're busy in Kiev, they launch one offense, two offensives into the sides of the Russian spearhead. And Russians are like, uh oh. So they, and they have to withdraw from the territory. One last Russian loss, because now they're about to hit them. With Kiev on the line, the Russians make a counter-offensive down south here, pushing up into multi in multiple places. Near Mariupol, there is a wave of troops. They come from the side, and they manage to take out the Ukrainian attack here. They reconnect their supply lines. They also reconnect their ability to actually function a war. They push in here from more into the north, from Kar like Russia into Kharkiv, where they attack the city and manage to capture it. And this is all happening over the like long course, but of course a lot of this is happening at the same time as this too. But but I can't do all this at once. But anyway, yeah, German troops pushing from Austria into Czechia, where they push in and they quickly, I don't know, kind of take South South Czech Republic. Yeah, South South Czech Republic. Yeah, that's what they take. South Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, and then, um, yeah, so Prague falls. That's when Europe realizes, hmm, how are we letting Germany win this war at all? So Europe are like, hey, Russia, do you want to just, like, I don't know, stay out of Germany and don't ally them? Russia, like, yeah, sure, because they don't want to fight Europe because they're having lots of trouble in Ukraine. So. Belarus leaves, Russia leaves, and, well, is there still a war happening here? So I guess, I guess I'm going to include it, so, there's the aggressors here, there's Russia, Belarus, and then we have, I don't know, Ukraine, the defenders, so they probably want to, maybe Cyan, Cyan color, I don't know, I'm just trying to, get some different colors for them but yeah now that's that war we have Czechia collapsing but with these countries leaving their war Baltics are like yeah there's no need for us to be in this war we don't have nothing against Germany so they leave Norway's like uh, revenge but um s the Slavs are Serbia's like yeah we don't need to do this because was like yeah yeah and they the Bal the uh, Balkans believe Begin to leave with no interest in the war. Well, Slovenia probably would have. Hungary doesn't. Hungary doesn't. Neither does Romania. Slovakia and Poland do. This is kind of a big bluff for both, but yeah. So the Italians they push into Slovenia. Their soldiers they uh. Quickly reached Ljubljana, 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 Ljubljana. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce their capital, but um, I'll I'll put it on screen here in the the text for you to see, so that you can see what I am trying to pronounce. But anyway, yeah, they capture Slovenia, Austria, Austria, just about holding the fronts here because you know. German troops been at them for quite a few days. The French push over and they they ended up they end up they capture Frankfurt. Frankfurt, that's the city there, yeah. Frankfurt. And Germany are like, oh, hell no. Nah. We have territories here, but we're losing our homeland. So they, they try push into Belgium to threaten Fr the French homeland so that the French might leave their homeland. But yeah, it doesn't work. French troops make a major counter offensive and they push Germany troop Ger Germany's troops right out of Belgium. Yep, right out of Belgium. 
Netherlands also make a tiny little attack there, but it's counter attacked. Uh, but their troops up north are doing well, and that's what they do to counter attack Germany's counter attack. They counter attack, and um, yeah, they uh, push in and push in quite far because there's a lot of French troops there as well and British troops. The French move in on a major attempt to connect the two to fully like surround the Rhineland and cut it off from Germany. Germany have to make a major attack here to try and stop them from doing so. With that, that was just a distraction. Now they make an offensive down south. With the French and Dutch offensives, the Austrians are like, hell yeah, let's do this. They attack German troops down south and begin to push them out so that maybe they can focus on the north. They, they make a surrounding of German troops here where Germany kind of, their front kind of collapses there. Uh, they make a attack into Slovenia. Yeah, Slovenia. Jesus, where'd it go from my head? And they retake Slovenian capital in Ljubljana, whatever it's pronounced. And then, um, yeah, the Italians are like, oh, hell no. Look at those Austrians putting into Germany going to lose this war. So they, they leave. Well, they don't join the... In fact, they don't just leave; they join the, they join the blue side, and Germany are like, "You traitors! How could you do that?" Italy are just like, "Live to see another day, man." Fair enough. But yeah, never betray your friends, kids. Uh, but yeah, they push over Italian troops. They push over the Germany weren't the Germany. <laughs> Germany weren't really focusing on this part because there was no threat to it. Uh, so it Italy managed to take that and they push Germany into a concentrated area. Polish troops push into the Czech Republic in an attempt to liberate parts of it and maybe try reform the government. They take they take a uh, they take um sorry I heard a cat. One second, one second. Wait Everything's fine. Um, yeah, they take enough and they take enough territory back to the Czech Republic, and they reform the government. One second, sorry. One second, one second, one second, one second. Give me a minute. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Um, uh, just you know, little things that uh to get done. But, you know, now we can start again. And, uh, yeah, so where was I? We have, um, yeah, Germany collapsing. The Netherlands managed to push the Germans. Well, actually, no. No, no, no. This is a very... Wait, one sec. Alright. This, this is a very entrenched area in the Netherlands, you see, so very hard to penetrate. But, um, yeah, so the Netherlands try to come around it like this. The Germans are like, oh, hell no. So they they move these over to here to try and stop this. And that's the, when the Netherlands launch their attack. And they push the Germans back. And that's when the Germans realize, damn, we messed up. The Netherlands capture their troops here. And they manage to retake all their territories. Well, this is Germany. They are pretty damn dead. The Norwegians land in northern Denmark after like l like weeks of not doing anything. Like they didn't even send any troops to help out. But uh, anyway, now they land a full blown landing in Denmark with a lot of troops. That's probably what they're why they're preparing so long. And they land and they manage to retake a lot of territory. They take this island. They take this island. They take Copenhagen. And this is when Germany's like, damn, should we surrender, or like. Uh, no, I'm like, I, I don't know bro, this, this is a kind of hard decision, not gonna lie. But yeah, Angela Merkel kind of went a little crazy, you know what I mean? That's the Prime Minister of Germany, President of Germany, right? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> One second, guys. Who is the President of Germany? Huh? Who's the President? 
Frank Walter Steinman. Is there a prime minister? Minister. Okay. I don't know German politics, okay? But, uh, yeah, so. That's kind of Germany gone. They they know that their homeland, they, they just have to. So they withdraw their troops from Czechia, Austria, and Denmark in order to protect their homeland. So, the Polish take advantage. They push into Germany, into the north. And they push, like, joint offensives with Czechia now because their troops have reached the borders of Czechia. And they launch in here as Germany tries to set up a defensive line about here in the east and about here in the west so yeah this is what Germany looks like right now not too good but Germany they forcefully push back the troops here they have to give up some territory in order to protect the rest of it. Sorry, I just need to color this real quick. Uh, oh, where am I going? Alright. So this is Germany. Oh, I forgot. Oh my god, I forgot, I forgot about Turkey. But Turkey would have left the war a while ago, because, you know, just like Italy, Bulgaria, they realized that, yeah. So with the war coming to a close, and Germany really not having any chance of winning this war now, People are wondering what they should do with the peace treaty. And, yeah, now a lot of people are joining this war because they're like, oh, maybe we can get some land off of this or something. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think, Billy? Maybe we can get some land out of this. But, yeah, so then they make a pact where, well, they make a an agreement where only people who joined at the start, kind of roughly from the start against Germany, are allowed to get peace, get land or anything off it. So that makes all these people leave again. Yep. Goodbye. Goodbye. Don't know why I colored blue in the first place. Goodbye. Goodbye. So yeah, this is kind of the end of Germany. Just have to video's been quite long already, just need to speed this up, they attack Germany, this is all happening very, f like, over a long period of time, they attack Germany, Germany's like, oh, hell no, you know, Berlin captured a while ago, by the looks of it, you know, and Germany finally surrenders. Now, I'm gonna make a peace treaty, I'll be right back, guys. Alright. Taking a look at this peace treaty, we can see that the Netherlands have gained territory up the north coast of Germany, north, <coughs> sorry, northwestern coast of Germany. They have gained territory down here as well. You can see Belgium has expanded its little pimple against Germany by a very lot. Liechtenstein has grown three times as big. France's Strasbourg border with Germany has gotten even pointier than it was before. Austria have annexed ba Bavaria. Czechia have just expanded their borders a little bit, just like, haven't taken any particular territories, they've just expanded their borders a bit along Germany. Poland have taken some coastline, some serious coastline, and they have taken some, it used to be kind of like this, they've taken some, they've taken a little mini, like, as territory as big as Liechtenstein down here. It literally actually does look like Liechtenstein, because it used to be like that. That is Liechtenstein. I'm sorry, I'll stop. But, um, yeah, we see the old Denmark. Oh my God, Denmark. God, I've forgotten the, what you called the Den people from Denmark. I, d I know it, I just forgot. But uh, the, the border used to be here, but now it's down here where Denmark had these territories back in, like, I don't know, 1400s, 1500s, something like that. But yeah, overall, Germany has been absolutely split up. They have been absolutely destroyed. I don't know what's going on in over here. We, ha we don't cover that in this video, so... Really, I don't know what's going to happen in this war. 
But uh, yeah, so that was um, what would happen if Germany tried to Anschluss Austria in 2023. Now, this is just my opinion. This isn't definitely going to happen. But this isn't definitely what would happen if Germany and Anschluss Austria. But in my point of view, it's best to say just don't touch Austria, Germany. For, y for your own sake, just don't touch Austria. Alright, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.